Hello everyone, GM, GM, welcome to the Solana Change Log. I'm Nick from the Solana Foundation DevRel team, and today I've got Jonas with me from the DevRel team. How you doing, Jonas? Hey Nick, I'm great. Looking forward to the change log. All right, let's go ahead and get to it. Have you seen any commits this week that caught your eye? Yeah, so there's a bunch of commits about uh, deprecation of like old mm -hmm. methods and so on. So we have, for example, the get stake activation was removed from the RPC client. Then uh, Kevin is removing a bunch of unused dependencies. So he's like improving a little bit. So he's moving um, many dependencies from dependencies to dev dependencies. So this like improves um, compile times a little bit. Then we have a cargo build BPF is deprecated and now removed. So if you're still using mm -hmm. this, you need to not do that anymore. So <laughs> I think now it's cargo build SPF, right? Uh, yeah, I think that's what it is. I, I honestly have to double check in the CLI. <laughs> yeah. And then we have uh, another one, a uh, removal of deprecated symbols. So some uh, RPC calls are deprecated and now removed, actually. So if you mm -hmm. run into any problems there, then um, yeah, you need to update, basically. Yeah, and I, I guess that's that's a good chance to just give like a friendly shout out again, like we did last week on the change log that if you're using any Solana code that is deprecated, there's deprecation warnings. They've been there for a while. A, while. Um, a lot of them even started around like version like 1.7, 1.8. And we, we just uh, are officially on 2.0 now, slowly being rolled out to all the clusters. But if you're using anything that has a deprecation warning, you need to make sure that you are upgrading your code to not use those deprecated um, syscalls, um, functions, RPCs, like anything that is deprecated. The Anza team is going through and updating the Agave client and all of the uh, tooling and things to, to basically remove all of those deprecated chunks of code. So like everyone needs to make sure that you're updating your code. Yeah, exactly. And then this one is about verify strict. So what I saw is that the um, verification of signature actually became a bit slower, but this is related to this SIMD here, right? Can you explain? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. We covered this on the change log, oh, I don't know, a couple of weeks ago. Well, it's probably three weeks ago when this was opened. But basically, this SIMD, and you can see it's merged here, it's already been accepted. And it has this notion of pre compiles. And basically, what these are doing is they're like the signature verification side of transactions, verifying different types of signatures. Solana uses ED25519, um, that curve. And then Ethereum like signatures, you can see it here on the screen. Not even going to try to say it, but it's different <laughs> cryptographic curves to do cryptographic verification, the signature verification. And basically what this precompile uh, SIMD proposes is, is effectively creating like a common interface for all of them. So that way they can be very, very similar. So adding additional support for additional cryptographic curves becomes even easier. Specifically, they actually call out FIDO pass keys using a different curve and making it so like, in theory, once these emerge, someone could add support for a FIDO passkey, um, a common signature curve for that, making it so you can use things like YubiKeys to just like sign messages, and they can be verified on chain using Solana. So it's been merged, and Sam Kim from Anza has already, um, you know, made one of the changes to make the existing code base um, compatible with this new um, accepted proposal and like basically this interface design. Yeah, this is really cool. I'm a big fan of YubiKeys, and everyone should be. Like, use YubiKeys for your email, for your Twitter, so you don't get hacked. Yeah, they're super cool. I got one right here, actually. These are really cool. So, like, the key to put in your computer, you need to touch it to log in, basically. So, they are pretty secure. Um, yeah, and interesting that they can now use these for signatures. So, this might be interesting. Yeah, I'm, I'm really excited to see someone someone build that for, for the Slon ecosystem. It'd be oh. really cool. Um, Let's go ahead and dive into some resources this week. There, uh, one of the resources I wanted to give a shout out to is Wilfred built this thing called LightDAS, the digital asset standard that people are, are kind of used to using. You know, Metaplex kind of put this forward. Basically, this is how compressed NFTs work. Like you make these RPC calls this, that are like the using the DAS API, kind of like an RPC extension. But Wilfred made like a light version of that so you can more easily run your own infrastructure, especially great for like local testing and things like that. So you can do like compressed NFTs and, and a lot of these types of um, digital asset related things using a lot of the Metaplex uh, protocols. And you can do a lot of that locally and make it so it's less uh, resource intensive than running a full DAS node, which can get, uh, can get pretty beefy. It's really cool also for local development, probably, right? Like if you want to do local host. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. 
think that's really cool. Yeah, DAS is uh, nice. I think it's mostly maintained by Metaplex, but like Helios is running it and Triton is running them as well, right? Yeah, I think all three of them are kind of like the the key maintainers of it. Um, there's some variances in like their implementations and like what they're running in production, I think. But generally, it's it's pretty similar. Yeah. So the next resource we have here is about Fire Dancer. Oh, yeah, this one. Right? Have you seen the uh, the first I block did. was produced by Fire Dancer? I did. Yeah, on main or on testnet. On testnet. Right? Yeah, I think so. I mean, oh, in the yes. second they're tweet, all, they wrote so close. like. <laughs> the thing that we didn't see, but that it failed directly after. But I think it's a great achievement already that it's now on testnet and working, actually. Frankendancer. Yeah. But yeah, there's a uh, there's a public bounty program for up to a million dollars. So if like calling all bug bounty hunters, just like this says, you know, if you're a bug bounty hunter and you're interested in security and like helping to improve A, Fire Dancer, but B, the entire Solana network, go take a look at this, read all the information in here and and do your own due diligence within the the uh, the Fire Dancer code base. Try to help find some bugs and and earn some money, earn some uh, some proof of work while you're doing it. This could actually be fun just to dig into it and see if you find something, make a bunch of money, and you can also um, run Fire Dancer yourself if you want, which you probably yeah. need to find these uh, vulnerabilities anyway. So that's pretty cool. Yeah. And then we have a new course from Web Three Builder Alliance, right? Yeah, shout out for the the WBA friends. Um, they applications are open for their next round, their next cohort for their Rust bootcamp. Basically, like it's it's a very polished uh, ed developer education program. They have shipped uh, lots and lots of very good developers. They've um, had lots of traction within the Solana hackathons too. Um, this program is is extremely good. Completely free to do. Uh, I encourage everyone to apply. I think applications are going to close in the next week or so after this changelog episode goes live. So get your applications in. Yeah, I only heard good things about it. And I think they're also pretty picky with uh, who they take, actually. So if you're good, sign up here for sure. Yeah, send it. And then the game jam ended, and you can see all the submissions on itch.io. And I think this time all yes. the games are open source, actually. So it's a great resource. If you want to see how on-chain games are built, Love that. how Solana integration works, there's a bunch of Blink games, there's some good Do games, there's uh, Unity games, JavaScript games. So yeah, check them out. Um, some of them are really fun to play as well. So it's really nice. And talking about yeah. Blinks, we have a few Blink explorers now. So this one is Blink fans. Do you know anyone about in, anything about this one? Yeah, there's there's been a couple of people that are building this idea of like a Blink Explorer, helping people discover what Blinks are out there. Um, we've got two of them pulled up here, BlinkFans.xyz and then ExploreSolana.com. Check them out if you're interested in like trying to figure out what Blinks are out there and, and share your feedback with the maintainers of these. And uh, yeah, build some more cool Blinks. Send them over my way. Definitely build more Blinks. Uh, it's always fun to see. You even have like a little screenshot of them. So, yeah, it's really nice to see these people like uh, finding all these blinks and putting them into lists because it's kind of hard to find them sometimes on Twitter. Mm -hmm. And one thing we forgot actually is Stack Exchange. So, we have Jimmy again, we have John C, we have Abhishek, Dimitrev, Svetsov, Ekaron is back, Callum. So, yeah, thank you everybody for uh, contributing to. Stack Exchange, super helpful. Yeah, keep up all the great work on Stack Exchange. A lot of new faces on there. You know, this is this is yeah. one of the best ways we can help improve the developer education and discovery experience in the ecosystem. So, ask your questions if you have them on Stack Exchange, and and even post them on Twitter. You can you know probably get some some faster responses that way too. Uh, but that's going to wrap it up for this episode of the Change Log, and we'll catch you next time. See you next week. Bye bye. <laughs>